The one action that would do more to reduce the crime rate than any other would be to end the so-called war on drugs. I investigated the incidence of homicides during the period of alcohol prohibition and after the period of alcohol prohibition. And then subsequently, during the period when the laws which were on the books against drugs were not enforced, and then after Mr. Nixon revived the so-called war on drugs in 1972. And if you look at the statistics of homicides, they declined sharply after alcohol prohibition was ended, after 1934. They then stay right down there, more or less, on through to 72, and then start going up. And I estimated that the so-called war on drugs was leading to about 10,000 additional homicides a year. Roughly half of the people who fill our jails are in there for drug-related crimes. I happen to be opposed to the prohibition of drugs on moral and ethical grounds as well as on practical grounds. I do not believe that the government should have the power to tell me what I may ingest. If they tell me that I may not ingest cocaine, which I have never done as it happens, <laughs> but if they tell me I may not ingest cocaine, the next step is they're going to tell me I may not ingest fattening foods. Why not? What's the logical difference? If it's for the benefit of the greater number that people should not have access to cocaine, why isn't it for the benefit of the greater numbers that we reduce all the obesity we see? And the way to do that is to prohibit what people ingest. At any rate, you may not agree with that. You may believe that it is ethically justified for the government to prevent the usage of these particular things called drugs. But if so, just look at the actual consequences. The war on drugs has been an utter failure. Nobody can deny that. You've spent billions and billions of dollars. You've thrown millions of people into jails. You've corrupted the police force, the law enforcement. You've tended to inflict damage on human freedom by government takeovers of property without due process, by government invading people's houses. And what have you got for it? There's no question. There are far more deaths from tobacco smoking than there are from, from cocaine or crack or all the other things you think of. In 2,000 years, there's no recorded case of a death from an overdose of marijuana. Marijuana is potentially useful for medical purposes, for glaucoma, for nausea, and so on. But you can't have research on it. You can't distribute it. Physicians can't prescribe it for those purposes. Anybody who is in favor of the prohibition of drugs should be in favor of the restoration of alcohol prohibition and of the prohibition of tobacco smoking. Whatever argument you can make for the existing catalog of illegal drugs, you can make for tobacco and uh, alcohol illogically incoherent. And so there's no doubt in my mind that that's step number one that would tend to reduce the crime rate. And step number two, which is more important on some levels and less important on others, would be privatizing the school system. Step I've been in favor of is free parental choice of schools through vouchers. One of the reasons we have high crime rate is because our schools do such a lousy job, particularly in the center cities, which are the generators of much of the crime. And that has the effect of producing kids who can't get jobs, who are not economically able to support themselves. And dealing in drugs, robbery, and so on become very, very good alternative for the use of their time.